Hello there. Today we are with the module 1 of the chapter 1 which is electric charges. So what are electric charges? Let's discuss. Let's take an example of the neutral atom. This is a neutral atom. This neutral atom when it loses the electrons what happens? It gets positively charged. But when this neutral atom gains the electrons or receives the electrons it gets negatively charged. It means the formation of the positive or negative charge depends upon the loss or gain of the electrons. So we can say that the lack or excess of the electrons in an atom forms the charges. Okay, The lack of electrons forms the positive charge. Lack of electrons means losing the electrons. Losing the electrons means losing the negativity. So it gets positive. On the other hand, the excess of electrons forms the negative charge. Excess of electrons means gaining the electrons, receiving the electrons, receiving the negativity. That's why it gets negatively charged. Moving ahead with some more about the electric charges. This is what the electric charge is a scalar quantity. We have already known about the scalar and vector quantities. So here the electric charge is a scalar quantity. It is represented by the symbol Q. A physical quantity always has a symbol and the symbol of the electric charge is Q. The unit of the electric charge is Coulomb. Let's discuss some more about electric charges which is conservation of charge. How these charges are conserved? Let's see with an example. Let's take an example of the NaCO. This NaCO. The net charge on this NaCO is zero. But when we see the formation of the NaCO, what we see? We see that the sodium atom is providing one electron to the chlorine atom. That's why the sodium atom gets one unit of positive charge while the chlorine atom gets one unit of negative charge. The net charge in this case again is zero. Plus one plus minus one, this becomes zero. The net charge before is zero, the net charge after is zero. There is no any change. That's why we can say that there is no any production of the charge and there is no any destruction of the charge. So we cannot create the charge or we cannot destroy the charge. Only we can transfer the charge or the electrons from one atom to another and which is called conservation of charge. So we can say that. The charges can neither be created nor be destroyed. However, they can be transferred from one atom to another. Moving ahead with some more about the charges, that is properties of the charges. So what are the properties of the charges? Let's see. We bring two positive charges together or we bring two negative charges together. What happens? They ripple each other. Why do they ripple each other? Because this positive charge is having the lack of electrons and this positive charge is also having the lack of electrons both these positive charges are having the lack of electrons it means they cannot fulfill each other's requirement that's why they ripple each other in other case this is a negative charge which is having the excess of the electrons and this negative charge is also having the excess of the electrons they cannot fulfill each other's requirement that's why they ripple each other so we can say that the like charges ripple each other. Moving ahead with some more, that is opposite charges. If we bring one positive charge nearby another negative charge, what happens? They attract each other. Why do they attract each other? Because this is having the lack of electrons. That's why this is positive charge and this is having excess of electrons. That's why it is negative charge and they can fulfill each other's requirement. It is ready to receive and it is ready to donate that's why they need each other that's why they are requiring each other and they attract each other so we can say that the unlike charges attract each other moving ahead with some more we have the property that is additivity what is this additivity additivity all about let's see the charges are additive in nature how are they additive in nature let's see with the help of a example so we have an example over here. Here is a system of charges which is having the charges Q1 minus Q2, Q3 minus Q4 and Q5. When we need to calculate the net charge of the system, the total charge of the system, what we need to do? 
we need to sum up these charges with sine the sum with sine which is called algebraic sum so the net charge on the system will be calculated as like this q1 plus minus q2 plus q3 plus minus q4 plus q5 this would be the net charge on the system which is algebraic sum of all the charges so we can say that the total charge of the system is the algebraic sum of all the individual charges present in the system moving ahead with the next property that is quantization all of us know about that the light rays coming from the sun to the earth in the form of packets of photons in the same way the charges are transferred in the packets of electrons and some more about this the electric charge is always transferred as an integral multiple of e what is the meaning of this term we will discuss here okay here is an atom this this is losing some electrons and providing it to the another atom so the atom which is losing the electrons gets positively charged the atom which is receiving or gaining the electrons gets negatively charged we can see over here and the number of electrons is n n is the number of electrons which is transferring from one atom to another atom and this number will always be an integer this number will always be like one two three four five and so on this will never be like in fractions 0 0.5 1 0.5 or 1.3 okay so this n will be like one two three an integer these numbers are called integer so that's why we are saying that the electric charge is always transferred as an integral multiple of e so the charge transferred here is n e so this will be given as the charge transfer q is equal to n e where n is the number of electrons which always will be an integer means one two three and so on this e is the charge of the electron the value of the charge of the electron is 1.6 into 10 to the minus 19 coulomb moving ahead with some more let's summarize this property which is quantization the electric charge is always transferred as an integral multiple of e such as e2 e3 e4 e and so on it would never be like 0.5 e or 0.3 e hence the transfer takes place as the packets of electrons as we discussed and one packet of electrons is called quanta moving ahead with some more about the charges that is electrostatic induction okay let's see what is this electrostatic induction we will take an example we have a conductor sphere here and we need to make it charged how we are going to make it charge we are making it charge without any physical contact with any other body so what we need to do let's see here we are bringing a negatively charged nearby this conductor sphere and we are not touching that we are making a separation between them we are not we are not allowed to touch that okay so what happens in this in this conductor sphere the positive charge shifts towards the negatively charged rod while the negative charge shifts on the other side if we connect this negative charge layer with the earth like this then what happens all these negative charge all this negative charge comes down to the earth the earth has the capability to absorb the electrons that's why it absorbed the electrons and this layer we can see is empty now we disconnect this connection of the sphere with the earth and it becomes like this when we disconnect the earth it becomes like this it has only positive charge and it is shifted towards the negatively charged rod if now we remove this negatively charged rod then what happens this positive charge is uniformly distributed all over the sphere what we have done we have we have done this neutral conductor sphere into a positively charged sphere without any physical contact between any bodies we are not making any physical contact between these two bodies and we are making this neutral conductor sphere to a charged sphere this phenomenon is called electrostatic induction in which without any physical contact we are generating the charges with the help of a charged body here the charged body is a negatively charged rod so what is electrostatic induction we can say 
the phenomena of generating the electric charge in a conductor due to another charged body without any physical contact between them is called electrostatic induction moving ahead with some more about the charges which is coulomb's law what is this coulomb's law let's discuss let us consider two charges q1 and q2 these two charges are separated by a distance r either these two charges are same charges or these are oppositely charged okay if they are like charges then what happens there is a kind of repulsion between them if these charges are opposite charges there is an attraction between them but there is a force between them the force between them is called electrostatic force okay and this electrostatic force depends upon the magnitude of q1 as well as the magnitude of q2 and also the separation between them which is r so how this relation is established over here let's see the electrostatic the electrostatic force between these two charges depends upon the charges like this the electrostatic force is directly proportional to the product of these two charges q1 and q2 the electrostatic force between these two charges is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them these two equations represent the coulomb's law so we can say that the electrostatic force between two charges is directly proportional to the product of the magnitudes of these two charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them this is called coulomb's law now to establish to establish an uh, expression an expression for the coulomb's law what we need to do we need to make these two equations as a combination and we we will make an expression for the coulomb's law how we are going to make that let's see these two equations we have let's combine them combining these two equations what we get we get this f proportional q1 q2 upon r square so we have a sign of proportionality over here whenever we remove the sign of proportionality we take a constant and here the constant is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 this factor is called epsilon 0 it is here epsilon 0 okay what is this factor we will discuss about it later okay so this is the final expression of coulomb's law this is the expression for the coulomb's law okay and 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught this is the constant over here we are watching here where 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 is a constant and the value of the 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 is 9 into 10 to the 9 newton meter square per coulomb square we can calculate this unit with the help of this formula as we have done in the units and measurement now we talk about this epsilon 0 this epsilon 0 is the permittivity of the free space there is a free space between these two charges a free space is there or the vacuum is there or the air is there between these two charges this medium which is permitting them to attract or ripple each other this is the factor which is permitting them to attract or ripple each other in this medium that factor is called permittivity of the free space so what are the what are we can say about permittivity of the free space the factor which is permitting these two charges to attract or ripple each other is called permittivity of the free space the value of the permittivity of the free space is 8.85 into 10 to the minus 12 coulomb square per newton meter square this unit we can also calculate with the help of this formula as we have done in units and measurement so moving ahead so what what can we do with this coulomb's law we can make it another form and that form is vector form so we will do here coulomb's law in vector form so how do we do that in vector form let's see here let's take an example of two charges the system of two charges one charge is plus q1 another charge is plus q2 and these two charges are the like charges so these like charges will ripple each other the force f12 f12 means the force experienced by the charge q1 due to the charge q2 and we are watching here f21 the f21 the force f21 is the force experienced by the charge q2 due to the charge q1 these two forces are representing the repulsion between these two charges okay so what will be the expressions for these two charges let's discuss here 
as we know that f2 one is force on charge q2 due to q1 how to find the expression of this let's see here this will be 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 upon r square r12 cap okay what here this is vector f21 and this is r12 cap here we can see 21 and here we are watching 1 to y is like this what here f21 is in the direction f21 is here in the direction towards right and this r12 cap is also in the direction towards right that's why we are taking this unit vector in case of f21 as we all know the unit vector is the unit vector is the vector divided by its magnitude when we put this value in this equation we get this this relation we get when we put this value in this equation so this is the vector form of the coulomb's law and here we are representing this vector f21 we can also calculate for f12 how to calculate for f12 let's see hmm. again the system of charges q1 and q2 f12 f12 this one is the force on charge q1 due to q2 so in vector form what we need to do we need to plus the value the value will be like this 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 upon r square and here the unit vector will be r21 cap watch here here 1 2 and here we can see 2 1 the force here we can see is f12 which is in the direction towards left and here we can see r21 cap the unit vector which is also towards left that's why we are taking r21 in case of f12 okay again what we need to do we need to put the value of this unit vector as vector r21 upon r because unit vector is the vector divided by its magnitude when we put this value in this equation what do we get we get this we get this vector f12 is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 upon r cube vector r21 so these two equations this one f12 and that one f21 are representing the coulomb's law in vector form if we compare these two equations we will get this relation f12 is equal to minus f21 what we can see here we are watching here f12 and f21 if we are considering this f12 as an action force then this f21 will be considered as the reaction force and in the another hand if we are taking this f21 as an action force then this f12 will be as a reaction force and these action and reactions are equal and opposite this represent this negative sign is representing the opposite directions of the forces so these two charges exert equal and opposite forces on each other and these forces obey newton's third law of motion which says that each and every action has an equal and opposite reaction so we can see here action reaction these are equal and opposite so that's all for now thank you for now see you again